The Bible is filled with so many amazing stories. And this, well, this is one of them. So the story goes that we find David on the run, running for his life. And you're probably wondering, how did all of this happen? I mean, David was slaying giants and he was now on the run? Well, it's a long story and we'll probably get into all of that at a later time. But basically, Saul wanted to have David killed. Now you're like, Saul, the king, when he, when he slayed Goliath, yes, that's Saul. In fact, there was a time where Saul actually threw a spear at David. So David was on the run for his life. So we find David in a cave near the Dead Sea in a place called Engedi. Now Saul is looking for David and as he is walking he needs to take a break and he sees a nice cave and he goes into the cave for his break. Now little did Saul know that that cave was the same cave that David and his men were hiding in. Now Saul was in the cave by himself and David's men see an opportunity to get rid of Saul. So they go to David and they're like, oh, David. David's like, yeah. That, that's Saul, David. Like, I, I know. You know, now's a good time to get him. And David is like, no, I cannot kill a man who God appoints as king. He is my king. So instead of taking Saul's life, David sneaks up to Saul and cuts off a piece of his robe and sneaks back with the piece of his robe. Now, when Saul is done, he gets up and goes out of the cave and David and his men follow him from a distance. Now, when Saul's a good ways off, David says, Saul! And Saul is like, David, is that you? I said, yes, I have a question. What is it? He's like, tell me why you don't like me, Saul. I have my reasons, David. Well, I would like to know why you would want to hurt me. So tell me why you don't like me. Well, if you must know, I heard that you want to have me killed. Well, that's not true. No, it's not true. If I did, would I have this? Mm -hmm. And David raises the piece of the robe that he had cut from Saul's uh, robe. And Saul is like, oh, I, I am so sorry, David. I am so sorry. I, I've been chasing you. I've been wanting you killed. And here you had a chance to, quite frankly, end my life. And you chose not to. I will not try to have you killed anymore. So Saul goes back and David decides, I really don't trust Saul that much, so I'm just going to stay where I am. And it's a good thing because a little while later, Saul finds out that David is in a place called uh, Hakala, and uh, he takes 3,000 of his men to do, guess what? Try to kill David again. So he goes after David, and when David finds out that Saul is after him, he finds out where Saul's camp is, and in the middle of the night, David and some men sneak into Saul's camp, where Saul was sleeping, and they get up to Saul, and they see Saul laying there with a spear next to him. Now, one of David's guys like, okay, David, last time, you didn't want to get rid of him. I can do it for you. I'll just, just, it'll be great, please, let me. And Saul, and David says, no, Saul is a king appointed by God. I cannot have him killed. So David 
takes a spear and a jar of water where Saul was sleeping and sings out. By the way, Saul's bodyguards were doing a horrible job. And they go far enough, and David yells, Hey! And Saul hears David's voice. And he knows who it is, and he says, uh, David, is, is that you? Like, yeah! What do you want? I have a question. Uh, tell me why you don't like me, Saul. Well, I would like to know why you would want to hurt me. Tell me why you don't like me. Huh? They say you want me dead. Well, who says that? A murderer of my own source. Well, they're lying. I mean, if I wanted you dead, would I have this? And David lifts up uh, Saul's spear and the jar of water. And just like before, Saul feels so bad. He's like, I'm so sorry, David. I am so, so sorry. Again, I have tried to come and harm you, but again, you have spared my life. And Saul goes his way, and David, still kind of not trusting him, decides to go his own separate way. Now, we're going to end the story there, and it's a very interesting story with a lot of interesting things, but the lessons that I get from it are so amazing. The lesson that I get from this story is you need to treat your enemies with love. Here we have David running for his life, and he has the chance to stop his enemies and, and end his enemy's life, and he can do it quickly, and he, he had all the right to, but he chooses to show love instead. He says, how can I hurt someone that God has appointed king? The Bible says we need to love even our enemies as ourselves. Now, it's a pretty amazing story, huh? And I hope you've had as much fun listening to the story as I've had telling the story. Till next time, bye.